are uh, already uh, uh, expecting their iftar after one or two hours, after two hours from now, inshallah. So we try to make it very light, very straightforward, and try to share some ideas and views on uh, this important, everyone, this important uh, uh, topic. Uh, as as Prof. Jamil uh, just mentioned, uh, we are trying to um, revisit the main, the concept of uh, civilizational development uh, from an Islamic perspective, but trying to look at it from what we call the systems uh, thinking approach. Uh, brothers and sisters, we. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, so we try to uh, together answer some questions uh, which are of importance to all of us here, especially the um, team of uh, Triple IT and those who carry the uh, the project of integration of knowledge, Islamization of knowledge, reform of the Islamic civilization or renewal of the Islamic civilization. Uh, we need to try to understand and articulate the question of civilizational development from a more uh, systematic approach. We have been working on this, I think our ulama, our scholars in the last 40 years or more. Uh, uh, to... I cannot hear anything, Muhammad Sadiq from Indonesia. Uh, Prof. Uh, Jamil, Prof. Dato Jamil, do you hear me? Yes, we hear, we hear you, we hear you. Uh, Dr. Mohammed uh, Siddiq from Indonesia, he says that he cannot hear anything. Okay, never mind, never mind. Uh, I think you can continue. Continue. We will try okay. to continue. Okay, so brothers and sisters, let's see um, how do we define uh, what is civilizational development. Uh, as an ummah, you know, as a Muslim society, we are here for a mission. We are here for a vision to achieve in this life. We can summarize our existence here in one word. And we can summarize our vision and mission in one word, which the Quran uses. We are vicegerent on earth. The concept of Khalifatullah or vicegerency on earth is a very dynamic, very crucial concept in uh, in Islam and in the Islamic society and the Islamic civilization and Islamic Ummah. This concept uh, actually uh, contains in itself all our existence. So based on this, we try to understand what is civilizational development and what type of civilizational development we need and why we need civilizational development and why we need system thinking or systems thinking at this juncture of the development of our society and humanity and human civilization at large. Brothers and sisters, uh, these are four questions we want to uh, address here. What is civilizational development? Why do we need this uh, shift or paradigm shift? And uh, in particular, systems thinking. And what are the examples? And uh, do we have, uh, have we in our heritage of our civilization, Islamic civilization, do we have this systematic thinking, system thinking? Do we have uh, system thinking thinkers? who can uh, give us an example of how Islamic civilization, Islamic mind is actually a system thinking mind. But when we lose in the development of our civilization and history, we lose the uh, dynamism of the uh, holistic mind, ijtihadic, uh, comprehensive mind, we start losing this quality, this ability of system thinking. So I will try to show you some examples of how Islam and Islamic civilization has introduced these ideas of system thinking or civilizational thinking or a civilizational approach. It's a kind of an ability. It's a kind of a, of a culture uh, in our scholarship. 
in our intellectual development as an ummah, as a civilization. But we lost that ability when the decline of Islamic mind started, when the decline of Islamic civilization started, we enter into another type of a mind, another type of a culture, as I will explain to you shortly. So I will try to give you some examples of how Islam by its very nature creates system thinking, civilizational thinking, civilizational approach. Means look at things from the bigger strategic uh, perspective, brothers and sisters. Then we can look at how or what is the way forward to reclaim this, these competencies, this culture, of system thinking, of civilizational thinking, instead of just partial thinking, segmentation thinking, which we are in now, it, particularly in many, uh, especially when we talk about our educational system, our cultural system, our knowledge system, our current knowledge system uh, leans more towards segmentation, partialization, as I will explain to you, brothers and sisters. Now, this picture here gives you a summary of my lecture. A summary of what I wanted to tell you today is just in this picture. If you see this picture, I'm trying to talk about how to regain back the ability to see our problems, and to see our reality, to see our uh, situation, our challenges from a bigger picture, so that we can understand from a system analysis perspective, understand ourselves, understand our context, understand our reality. And when we propose solutions, when we propose projects or when we propose recommendations to solve our problems, we need to have that bigger picture, that strategic mind, that system thinking approach, which is, as I said, missing in many things that we do today, whether in our educational system or in our political system or economic system, or in our social system, we have that problem, brothers and sisters. Before I move forward, let me just show you and uh, uh, relate what I'm going to tell you today to what's happening in the world, brothers and sisters. The world has changed and is changing very fast. In the last 50 years, and in the last 10 years, and in the last five years, and the last two years, and the last year since COVID-19, things are changing very fast and in a very uh, different manner, dif different way. Brothers and sisters, when you hear things like this, how do you relate these things to our Islamic thought, to our Islamic knowledge, to our educational system? Uh, to our way of looking at things, to our way of understanding what is development and how we create that development. When you listen, when you hear uh, fourth industrial revolution or you hear um, artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, uh, knowledge society, knowledge economy, intelligence economy, internet of things, and when you hear uh, and you read things about the new mind studies, where people talking about the emotional intelligence, talking about uh, a whole lot new uh, mind and understanding of reality and context, when you hear about post postmodernism, and when you hear about big data, and how it is penetrating our thinking, our economy, our uh, uh, artificial intelligence for that matter, uh, all our life. When you hear about blockchain, how this is related to your understanding of the reality, of the phenomena 
of development now. When you, uh, when you hear about, and, and when you read about this, uh, all what's happening in our global environment ecosystem, the new problems of environment, the new problems, the new international uh, crimes, the new, the new social media, the new, all these things, how they influence your thinking as a professor of Islamic studies, as a professor of social science or human science or natural science, but you have the background of Islam and you are looking for Islamic development. How all these things which are happening influence our economists, our specialists in this social science, in human science, in behavioral science. I'm not sure whether we are understanding the impact of all these things, whether we acknowledge or not, they are changing our life. They are changing our mind, our psychology, our economy, our way of doing things, brothers and sisters. So based on this new reality where we are living, brothers and sisters, we want to understand. And we cannot understand this by remaining in the same way of looking at things. If you look at this dilemma, dilemma here, if I can show you here, this dilemma here, we have a dilemma in our culture, in our mind, in our way of looking things, the reductionist approach. We reduce the complex phenomenon into just the, the corner from where we see things. If I am an economist, uh, yeah, I look at the whole things from an economic perspective. If I'm a political, a politician, I will look at them from a political perspective. If I'm uh, a lecturer of Islamic studies teaching fiqh, I will look at the world from this fiqh perspective. If I am in Quran and Sunnah, I look at it from the Quran perspective or the Sunnah studies perspective. If I am a sociologist, I look at it from a sociologist. That's all good. And that's what we call specialization. But this type of specialization created a kind of segmentation, partialization, fragmentation, uh, 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 losing the bigger picture, losing the, uh, the, the, the strategic understanding of what's happening. And development as one of the issues, not only of the Islamic world, but of humanity, is that type of an issue which demands and needs what we call system thinking, what we call the civilizational approach, the civilization vision. Because our problem as an Islamic ummah in our history and now is not just an economic problem or a political problem or a social problem or an educational, or for that matter, a theology problem. But it's, as Malik bin Nabi said long time ago, it is a civilizational problem. And to treat a civilizational problem, you cannot just treat it by one of its product or one of its aspects, which is the economic or the social or the educational or the moral or the ethical. The civilizational problem needs a civilizational approach. And the civilizational approach by its nature is a system thinking approach, which requires you to see the problem and the issue from all these perspectives, like the idea or the example of the elephant and the blind people uh, in the room. Each one of them touches one part of the elephant, the nose and the leg and the, uh, and then each one of them is describing and explaining what he touches. So they will not tell us what is it that in the room, Someone will tell you there is a, that's exactly what's happened uh, in our case when we deal with development. And then we have this mind and culture of segmentation, fragmentation, isolation, and partialization, reductionist means you, you reduce a 
complex phenomenon or issue or problem into just small, small parts so you cannot fix it. Now, the reality here, brothers and sisters, let me tell you that one of the good characteristics, one of the, one of the important and the good characteristics of the Western civilization today and the Western uh, scholarship and the Western mind is developing these ideas of systems analysis. You want to solve economic problems or family problems or management problem or social or economic, you use systems, you think paradigm. But until today, in many parts of the Muslim world, whether in our education or dealing with culture, or we have that tendency of not thinking paradigm, not thinking model, not thinking systems so that we understand the phenomena in its uh, complexity, uh, in its uh, re, uh, uh, what, in its causes, in its effects and consequences, and in its impacts, and in how it is created, and how it influences us. In a simple term, we understand in those who are in economics and social science, and they know this game theory, they know this quality system when you have the inputs and you have the processes and you have the outputs and you have the managing, uh, uh, the management, how you govern and manage all this, and then you have the feedback. Do we have this culture uh, uh, in our reform movements since they started 100 or 200 years ago? Are we having that culture of thinking system, of thinking strategic? What does it mean thinking strategic or thinking system? Means when you take the phenomena of decline, for example, or the phenomena of backwardness of the Muslim Ummah, you look at it from a civilization perspective where you understand it in all its perspective, in all its uh, uh, aspects, so that you know when you plan, you know the strategic objective, you know the indicators, you know the initiatives, you know how to measure, uh, you know how to plan, you know how to govern, you know how to manage, you know how to deal with the risks. We face a lot of risks in the development of our Islamic movement, whether the political movement or the social movement or the all types. But, but I noted that, or I observed that, we still have lacking, we are lacking in this type of knowledge, skills, competencies of system thinking. In other words, I can use civilizational approach. Brothers and sisters, when we talk about system thinking, we are talking about how the world and how the new sciences, the new knowledge, the new life, the new reality become interdependent, interdependence, interconnectedness. And the more we go in the future and the more the development of science and technology and its products like artificial intelligence and their application, uh, uh, the big data and their application, I don't know cut and cut like big data is a very huge development in humanity, brothers and sisters. How can we use this in dealing with the issues of development from Islamic perspective, the issues of, uh, the, uh, uh, of economy, the issues of uh, society from an Islamic perspective? Can we use block uh, this big data to analyze the problems of the Islamic Ummah, Islamic science, Islamic knowledge, Islamic development? How do we do this? How do we relate these things to our reality? So brothers and sisters, why I'm saying this? Because in the near future, 15, 20 years from now, any one of us who is in Islamic studies or social science from Islamic perspective or Islamic knowledge in general, and that we don't know the applications of these things and their impact, we will not be only left behind, but we will be in trouble. We cannot relate our knowledge to the world of the future in all areas, brothers and sisters. Because when we talk about system analysis, other words like this interconnectedness of things, 
Now you cannot just, I give you example, quote and quote. If you are teaching fiqh al-mu'amalat, I don't imagine 10 years, 20 years from now, a person teaching fiqh al-mu'amalat and he doesn't know economics. And he doesn't know financial analysis. He doesn't know the new, uh, the new what uh, the Bitcoin and all these new uh, virtual currencies and the, the things will change. You will be isolated. You will be left behind with your knowledge. That's why we need to change so that we can integrate the new things into the curriculum of those who are studying fiqh or usul al-fiqh or ilm al or psychology or sociology from an Islamic perspective. We need, because the world, as I said, is changing and we need to articulate all this. Brothers and sisters, just briefly, we are talking about system analysis means also integration of knowledge. Integration of knowledge is one form of system, systems analysis or systems thinking, but at the lower level, integration of knowledge, when you talk about integration of knowledge, um, especially let's say if we take the example of how we look from Islam Islamization perspective, you talk about integration of knowledge means integration of revealed knowledge and human science, this need to be expanded. Okay, when we talk about Integration of knowledge. Now we need to talk to, to look at it from inter, multi, and transdisciplinary perspective and competencies. Not only integrating the revealed knowledge in human science or in psychology. No, no. There should be a kind of understanding which is more holistic. Because as I said, integration of knowledge is just one phase in building the holistic Islamic mind that can deal with development in this 21st century and in what's happening in the world now and in the future. So this, what I'm saying, will affect the curriculums of nurturing the new generation of sociologists, psychologists, or, or Islamic studies uh, specialists and experts. In the future, it will not be sufficient just to know the ulumul islamiya to be able to do ijtihad and solve the problems of the ummah. You don't, it's not enough only to know, even for that matter, uh, human science or some of this human science. Now, with what's happening, it will become a must in the future to know. And to teach our students in IIUM or in the Islamic universities, we teach them system analysis and system thinking, how they think using these systems, using this knowledge, the civilizational approach. They, they need to have the advanced uh, skills of creative thinking and critical thinking and analytical thinking. Uh, and and th th you cannot talk about system thinking or civilizational approach, and you don't have the abilities to analyze and synthesize, const uh, deconstruct and construct knowledge. All these are skills that will be needed for our postgraduate student, for our lecturers, for our professors in all disciplines, brothers and sisters. So we'll, uh, we will need the civilizational approach and this system thinking analysis. So brothers and sisters, moving forward, we need to understand that we are living in a different time or in a different context where we need to develop the abilities, the competencies of civilizational approach. It means we will be able to see things from a civilizational perspective where the economic, the social, the cultural, the ICT, the science, uh, all this perspective will help you to do this. And system analysis provides you with that kind of tools and techniques and structures to start thinking uh, in a more bigger uh, perspective. But since this is talking about Islamic thought and talking, for example, about 
uh, any concept in Islamic thought like development, you need to understand many things, as I will show you shortly. Now, for example, let's, for example, take the concept of development. What is development and what is civilizational development? Development from an Islamic perspective is related to you being a vicegerent on earth, Khalifatullah, Khalifa on earth. What does mean Khalifa on earth? Means you have a, a mana and a trust and a mission to accomplish. What is your mission to accomplish? Your mission is to do ibadah, number one. Number two, to do i'mar. I'mar means building civilization, building balanced civilization, tamadun, or to build a civilization. Khalifa, you, you are here also to build. When you say you build civilization or you do i'mar or umran, as Ibn Khaldun say, you are here to build a desirable life, society, community, that can provide the material and spiritual and moral and social and physical needs of people. So that's what does mean civilization from a Khalifa perspective, not from uh, Karl Marx perspective, not from Hegel perspective, not from Adam Smith perspective, not from Heidegger perspective, not from Derrida and Foucault and all these scholars. I'm talking about Khalifatullah the vicegerent of God, when you look at the concept of development itself, you need to understand it in its real deep meaning. Because Khalifa, you are here, yes, to worship God, but worship in Islam, it happens that it's not just ritual, but it's social. You build life, you build civilization, you build culture, you build ilm, you build knowledge. But how do you do all these things? Brothers and sisters, development is the processes, those processes where you start uh, translating this worldview or this understanding into real uh, solutions in life. And this life has aspects, the economic, the social, the political, the cultural, and so on and so forth. So when we look at development from the Khalifa perspective, from the Quranic perspective, even the human itself, which is the first level of development in Islam. In Islam, there is, in the core, is the development of Khalifatullah himself. Then comes the level of family development, then social development, then comes economic development, then comes cultural development, then comes the other types of development, then we, we reach the level of the civilizational development. Now, let's talk about the first level of development, which is Khalifatullah, you and me, and, and this is the starting point of change. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of any people unless and until they change what in themselves. The change here uh, starts in the individual, the, in the Khalifa himself. And this Khalifa, to do the development and the tarbiyah and the nurturing of the Khalifa, we need all these aspects, his heart, his soul, his mind, his senses, his character, his uh, uh, fitra, all this are important for us to understand what does development mean. And then his ethical and moral and social and cultural and intellectual and spiritual and cognitive and emotional, all these aspects are to be the center so when we, when we, in our universities or our schools or in whatever uh, structures or places where we educate people, this understanding, this comprehensive understanding need to be reflected in the curriculum, in the policies, in the teaching, in the textbooks, in the policies, in the way how we nurture people. So brothers and sisters, you are a vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we look at you from this perspective. Here, uh, I want you to see the bigger picture here where our model of education. So you are vicegerent, and as a vicegerent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in 
in Islam and Islamic civilization, the concept of Allah, the concept of Tawheed, the concept of vicegerent from day one of Islam until today is the center of Islamic knowledge, is the center of Islamic. So you remove the concept of Allah and the concept of Tawheed from Islamic civilization, it will all, you cannot interpret it. You cannot explain it. The concept of Allah, the concept of Tawheed is the center. Okay, so that's why, brothers and sisters, in this model, in this model, we see that development starts from this Khalifa. And these are the elements which are very important for this Khalifa, like his Iman, his Nafsu and Tazkiyah, uh, his interests and Maslaha. Uh, and that's why we put the Maqasid Sharia here as in the center, the Islamic worldview in the center. All these things you see here are important to develop this Khalifa as the center of civilizational development. We can go and develop economy, develop build uh, buildings, uh, by uh, uh, artificial intelligence, by science, by cars, by whatever. And we show that we have a great roots, great civilization. But if you miss the development of this, then you have just a civilization. You have a society with all these sophisticated things, but the roh is not there. The substance is lost. That's why you will see a lot of problems, brothers and sisters. Now, this is just to show you, brothers and sisters, I move forward so that I keep time. Uh, uh, so, brothers and sisters, uh, based on this, when we talk about development or civilizational development from an Islamic perspective, remember that always this concept of development reflects the connection uh, of the human himself, this Khalifatullah, then his relation with Allah, then his relation with fellow human, then his relation with nature, with the universe, with nature, and his relation with life. This perspective of development means we are not just talking about development from a very uh, uh, narrow or segmented perspective, but we are talking about a holistic perspective where the Khalifa is in the center and then comes all other types of development from economic to political too. Now, if you succeed in the development of the center, all other uh, type of development will just follow suit. But if we miss and we have disturbances and problems in the development of the center, then we see all the repercussion, the negative consequences happening in our political scene, in our social scene, in our economic. You see all this which happening is actually reduced to this center. That's why Islam stresses the importance of this human in all this uh, perspective. So brothers and sisters, now I want to give you some examples from the Islamic history showing how our ulama looked at the concept of development, but from their different perspective, but they have that systematic thinking, that system approach to the uh, phenomena of development. Now, I, I, I selected here six uh, models of our ulama uh, showing some of their projects, brothers and sisters, uh, that reflect this system thinking. I want to start with Abu Hamid al-Ghazali. The Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, a great scholar of Islam, and I consider him uh, a person with a system mind thinking or a system thinking mind. He's not just a normal alim or scholar. He is a system thinking mind. That's why you, you find al-Ghazali talks about philosophy, about tasawwuf, about akhlaq, about usul al-fiqh. Example, when you take his book of Al-Mustasfa fi usul al-fiqh, a book which is in, in usul al-fiqh, but if you read that book, you see the abilities of Al-Ghazali to integrate other knowledge into the system of, of usul al-fiqh. For example, you find that he tried to integrate philosophy there, uh, 
the uh, the uh, uh, approaches of uh, um, the ethics is involved there lugha or language is involved there so that's system thinking when you are dealing with a phenomena for example you look at it from the different perspective which are required now i take example because why i take uh, i took uh, Muhammad al ghazali here because he the title of his book shows that the ummah in very early days start already doing reform and tajdeed and ihya it, tajdeed and ihya and reform is not because of colonization the last 100 or 200 years it was because of the development of the islamic civilization in many phases which resulted in the need for reform that's why the title of the book is ihya ulum din ihya ulum din means revivification or revival of the islamic knowledge the religious knowledge means al ghazali got a question there got a problematic he wants to revive the ulum din because in the fourth century already the ummah developed and uh, spread all over the globe and the new generation come new science come new knowledge come so this alim wants to revive and when he wants to revive the uh, religious thought in his center in, if you read al ghazali you will find that in the center is ihya of the human of the person of the khalifatullah he talks about the person himself. So I can say that this project of Abu Hamd al Ghazali focuses on development from its spiritual, moral, ethical perspective in his own experience and later on uh, in the Ummah. That's why if you read Ihya Ulum al Din, you will find that he focuses on the development of this side. And to develop that, if you read it, you will find that he focus on uh, maqasid al-sharia, uh, he talk about the maqasid of ibadah, and he talk about the maqasid of the mu'amalat, the maqasid of uh, the munjiyat. He tried to give us a way how to revive the ummah, how to do development, focusing on developing the individual. So this is a summary here, but I, I need just to move to show you others here. So his model is based on knowledge, ilm, then tazkiyah, purification, then the maslaha and public interest. He talk about maqasid al-sharia, and also uh, he talk about, uh, even he link this one to living and earning. Uh, that shows that even though he's focusing on the spiritual, moral, ethical development, but because he's thinking system thinking, he talks about ma'ash, about living. He talks about ilm. He talks about uh, iman. He talks about uh, maslaha. He talks about many other things. I move to another uh, scholar, brothers and sisters here. Uh, sorry, here. Uh, he's, he's Ustad, who is... Al Imam Al Juwaini. Al Imam Al Juwaini also, I consider him as a system thinker, a man who who was a very deep, strong thinker, and in his book Riyathul Umam, that the, this Riyathul Umam, Fitiyathi Zulum, you know what does mean Riyathul Umam, saving the Ummah in the in the critical, exceptional times and situation. He imagined in his book which is just a small book, but he imagined that there, there will be a time where the, our ummah will spread and the civilization will spread and there will be a decline and there will be, uh, uh, there will be uh, a decline of the Islamic knowledge, a decline of the Sharia, and there will be people or there will be calls that uh, uh, from people not to implement the Sharia and to go to other models, to go to other uh, way. At that time when he introduced this book, many people, they disagree with him and they say it's impossible that Sharia will, will go or Sharia will be sidelined or Sharia. But later on, three centuries after him, the Ummah enters that situation. It's like a futuristic mind. It's like a person who understood based on his reading of the Quran, that we are human and human dynamics and the human social dynamics can lead to anything. And, and, and if you remember when the colonization movement, movement came and the secular 
the secular model of life dominates over the world and you see what happened to Islamic Sharia when it was sidelined and the mainstream become the conventional law, the conventional education, the conventional science and Islamic knowledge is sidelined. This great mind at that time, he was, he put some hypothesis and he say, I would like to, to propose a solution when this situation happens to the ummah. When, when the ummah become in this critical situation, what is the solution? And Imam al juwaini says, the solution is in maqasid al-sharia. Not in the, uh, maybe the rulings of fiqh, maybe the fiqh itself can disappear, maybe the ulama can die, but what can keep us moving is the maqasid al-sharia and these maqasid al-sharia are very important according to him so this is his model it is based on futuristic scenarios if you read al-juwaini al-ghiyathi you will find that he put many scenario and in each scenario he was telling that's the solution so i took from this that this perspective of development, brothers and sisters, if we want to develop or to talk about civilizational development from the perspective of Abu Hamd al-Ghazali, we need spiritual, we need ethical, we need moral, we need maslaha, we need maqasid. From the perspective of al-Juwaini, al we need planning, we need strategic thinking, we need uh, future analysis, we need scenario analysis. And I don't want to go into the details, otherwise I can give you some text. Then we move very quickly to al-Imam Shatibi. Imam Shatibi is a system thinker, is, is, is a mind, an integrated mind. This great scholar, he brought ilmul maqasid, maqasid al-sharia. Maqasid in the time of al-Juwaini, al-Ghazali, al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam and others, it was just a topic. And one of the uh, items or uh, topics under usul al-fiqh, in the illa, in the... Uh, then comes uh, then comes El Juwaini among the first to talk about the five uh, the five values and the three hierarchy necessities needs and complementary values and then comes Imam Al Ghazali also and mention it then comes El Imam Shatibi put it in a system a system of thinking and one of the great ideas of Imam Shatibi which we still haven't really invested on it. Uh, before Shatibi, the ulama were talking about maqasid al-sharia, which is the five values. Imam Shatibi come and talk about the maqasid al-mukallaf. You know, maqasid, he talk about maqasid sharia, then maqasid al-mukallaf, the maqasid of the khalifatullah, the maqasid of the person, the human. And this actually opens the door for human science, for social science, for understanding reality. Instead of Usul al-fiqh, focusing more on the text and understanding how to deal with Quran, Sunnah, Qiyas, Ijma, and all this. Imam Shatibi come and say, you have to deal with reality. And dealing with the mukallaf means what? Means social science, means human science, means, so, means psychology, anthropology, politics, governance. So from here, Imam Shatibi developed a system where development, added, he added another perspective of how to understand the paradigm or the model of Islam of development by adding the idea of social science. Human, but of course he didn't use the term social science or human science. This idea of social science, human science, culture and Umran, we find it with Ibn Khaldun. We move because Ibn Khaldun was almost in the same period of Imam Shatibi and Ibn Khaldun is the one for the first time in the history of Islamic civilization provided a system, a model, an approach, how to deal with the phenomena of uh, Umran, of society. In, in his model, in his system, brothers and sisters, he talk about human association, religion, uh, state apparatus, a dawla, he talk about al-asabiya, blood feeling, he talk about Umran, environment, values, he talked about many things, including governance, economy, science, education, ta'aleem. That's, that's a system thinking 
brothers and sisters. This is a civilizational approach to a phenomena. With Ibn Khaldun, development becomes more comprehensive and more integrated brothers and sisters. So I don't want to delve into the details, but just to mention here, from Ibn Khaldun, we start talking about, but unfortunately, because of the decline of Islamic civilization, this type of thinking uh, didn't flourish in Islamic civilization. We come later on, four centuries later, we come to know about Ibn Khaldun from the writings of August Kant, the one who says that he developed sociology, the one who says that he developed these social sciences. So brothers and sisters, if it happened that in Islamic civilization, the thoughts of Al-Ghazali, Al-Juwaini, Ibn Khaldun, Al-Shatibi developed, we could have seen a different type of human and social science in Islamic civilization. I move forward. I come now to our times here. One of the scholars who given us also another model of system thinking and systematic thinking about the phenomena of development and civilizational development is Malik bin Nabi, our contemporary scholar who dealt with the phenomena of development and civilizational development and who spoke about the civilizational approach, who spoke about system thinking, who spoke about uh, uh, about the, 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 the conditions of renaissance. In his model, he talks about this uh, re realm of persons, realm of ideas, realm of uh, uh, objects. Here you can, in the realm of persons, you talk about people, family, uh, all types of social uh, structures. In the realm of ideas, you talk about worldview, knowledge, ilmu, methods, and all this. In the realm of uh, um, objects, you talk about economy, you talk about um, tools, techniques, and so on and so forth. The social relations network, this is a great topic, a great element in Benebi's approach to civilizational development. Ibn Khaldun, when he talked about this in his model, he talked about asabiya, about uh, blood feeling. He talks about asabiya and state. In Ibn Khaldun model, the unit of analysis of development is state. In the model of Ibn Malik Ibn Nabi, it is civilization, like Arnold Twimby. It is civil, you want to do development, don't focus on family, on small, small phenomenon like economy, like, no, you talk about the civilization as the real uh, focus for you to develop your society. So brothers and sisters, these are some of the phenomenon. Now, I really uh, need to move. I will just add another five minutes and stop. Uh, brothers and sisters, there are many things to tell you here, but I wanted really to go more for questions and answers. I try here to explain our um, an integrated model. Uh, so this PowerPoint will be sent to you, brothers and sisters. You might look at it later on, but uh, we need to talk about civilizational development from the system analysis thinking, from a civilizational perspective. And in this civilization perspective, there are many things very important. The concept of Khalifa. And when we talk about vicegerent, as I said, we are not talking only about the individual, but man, family, society, ummah, and the world. We talk about Umran Insani. I borrow the concept of Ibn Khaldun. We talk about growth, progress, civilization, culture, and relations. We talk about worldview. You cannot do civilizational development from an Islamic perspective without worldview. I call it here the uh, Hayatun Tayyiba worldview using the concept of Islam, of the Quran. Hayatun Tayyiba. Lanuhyiyannahum Hayatun Tayyiba. When they follow my teachings, my, my uh, word, my manhaj, I will provide them the Hayatun Tayyiba. That's the worldview. So we need these four elements and we need the element of nature, which is environment. From an Islamic perspective, these four things, Allah, al, -Al kawn universe, life, and men are very important. Now, we need to have Maqasid al-Sharia as a guiding. We need to talk about governance, leadership, good management, 
or what we call in Islamic words, tadbir. We need to talk about hikmah, knowledge, wisdom, education. We need to fight all these injustices. This is a model which I call here istikhlaf, based on the word of istikhlaf, model of development, brothers and sisters. These are some of the details and explanations of this model. I just move forward here, brothers and sisters. Uh, now, when we look at development from an Islamic perspective as a system, as a planning, as we need to look at it from a different perspective means, brothers and sisters, the Islamic movement and the movements of reform and change need to uh, revisit this part of their uh, work. I know that the Islamic movement is doing a great job, but I notice that this part of uh, system thinking, uh, this part of civilizational approach is missing somehow in many uh, 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 things that we do. Now, what I recommend is this. Recommendation is that in our, whether universities or in our education uh, institution or in our research, or we need to empower our student, our researchers, our scholars, our ulama with these competencies of system thinking or civilizational analysis thinking. We need to move the idea of integration to other level where when we, uh, when we nurture our people, our students, our scholars, our ulama, we don't just focus on uh, their own specialization and some other knowledge here and there, but we need to integrate many new things, including science and including all these new technology things which are influencing us. We need them to know about all this. With this, brothers and sisters, I thank you for listening. And uh, I stop at this point. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam, Dr. Thank you very much. Uh, the talk is so interesting. I do know uh, the time is already almost six. I will ask Mr. Fawzan. I think if we give another one hour to him, he will not finish. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot to be covered because from some, as he said, only one slide. I thought by giving him 40 minutes it will be more than sufficient. Uh, Alhamdulillah, he is going to share the slide with all those who are late uh, in attending the, this lecture. Uh, how much more time, Prof. Hozan? Uh, up to you, Mr. Moderator. Dr. <laughs> Mr. Moderator. Okay, I'll give a few questions. I think I'm sure many people are curious to ask questions. Uh, uh, maybe, uh, hmm. uh, Prof. Aziz, can you stop sharing? Uh, we can, uh... Uh, okay, okay, just a minute. Uh, just a minute here. I could, uh, okay, stop sharing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, now I, I see the things. Yeah, anyway, not... maybe we can have another 10 minutes to... Yeah, okay. uh, uh, so that we really uh, Because it's coming to Iftar. So, please, uh, yeah. any question, please? Uh... What is this? You want to see your face? Uh, okay, 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 okay. I'm fasting. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, has anybody have raised their hand? Yes, Pahabib. Yes, and then the brother Abad Abdul Bashir, yes, another yes. one, uh, and brother one Muhammad Hasni. So, one Muhammad Hasni. Yeah, yeah. So we give uh, uh, three questions first. Okay, if the answer is short, then we can extend another one. Uh, <laughs> you welcome all uh, Pahabib first. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. I'm very happy to listen this uh, comprehensive and enlightening uh, presentation. Uh, we begin with the, <clears throat> the approach of the Islamic civilization approach toward development and the need for uh, systemic thinking and analysis. Yes, in the past we used to call it as the ecological holistic approach and now in the Islamic perspective, 
in the integration of knowledge perspective, we see that the systemic system is an Islamic uh, or holistic or kafa approach as it has been also mentioned by uh, Professor Bergwood with three or four uh, scholars, uh, uh, Ibn Khaldun with the Mokaddima and uh, Malik bin Nabi, uh, the recent and uh, also Juwaini, yeah, and certainly Ashadibi. Yeah. And what we would like to learn more from Professor is that uh, the holistic, uh, the what you call systemic uh, system approach, system thinking, system analysis is really needed uh, when we talk about development and sustainability, because sustainability, uh, we talk about the whole concept of the uh, ecological, uh, what you call uh, sustainability, but <laughs> cultural sustainability, econo economic sustainability, and also the resilience, resilience, yeah, resilience in the in the development. And peace, certainly, peace and justice is also regarded part of this uh, uh, what sustainability, yeah, peace and justice. Uh, and, and what I would like to ask to Professor is, uh, could you please also uh, what you call elaborate on the uh, the need for integration of this uh, Quranic uh, and also Makasid, yeah, Makasid the Sharia and Makasid Qur'aniya, Makasid Qur'aniya in this uh, systemic yeah, approach. And certainly from the very beginning, uh, Islam has a holistic, uh, what you call the, the approach of uh, civilization uh, approach. That is the uh, Kafa. Yeah. So thank you, Professor. Barakallah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ustaz. Thank you. Uh, can we go to the next one and then we answer all of them? Uh, okay, uh, can we go to Dr. Muhammad Abdul Bashir? Yes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. I'm from Bangladesh. Uh, thank you very much uh, to the speaker, Professor Bergut, for his nice presentation. But the integration, we are talking almost about the integration and Islamization of knowledge. But the main issue is, the main problem is, the where, where we shall establish this integration? And how can we establish this Islamization when all the Muslims countries are flourished by the Western civilization? We are studying under the Western civilization and all, almost all of the higher educational institutions, all the specialized subjects are secular. So if the rulers are not interested, if the favorable circumstances are not there, so it is not possible, the integration, and this is number one. And then number two, the ulama and Islamic scholars are so divided in so many groups that is beyond any description. If I say about our country in Bangladesh, I can say that there are 50, uh, 50 difference of opinion among the ulamas and their scholars, mm -hmm. how it can be integrated. I am very frustrated. I am very sorry to say that we talk a lot of things about the civilization, Islamic civilization, but no holistic approach, no integration, no uniform thinking, and nothing of the short. So I think the, this is very, the very, very difficult uh, area to integrate our Islamic civilization and to go back to the old Islamic civilization. So this is my uh, this is my observation and feelings on very very Thank clear. Inshallah. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Dr. Uh, you go to the th third one, Dr. Wan Hasni. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Uh, Thank you very much for the uh, enlightening lecture. Uh, my question is very short, actually. Um, shall we think about system thinking as something that we try to see? The Islamic knowledge from the window of system thinking, or if you look very carefully from Al Ghazali, from Al Mawadi, from, from the uh, Maturidi, and so on, 
if you look very carefully, I think they already have that in their in, in their way of how they do or they organize their knowledge. So if you look in that manner, then more so that I think even the current people today can learn from our old scholars more than what we want to see the old scholars thinking in the new window that we start to think now. I think you understand my first year, Professor. Yeah, yeah, Okay. 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 Please, uh, please, uh, Okay, th thank you very much, dear brothers and sisters, our doctor professors and doctors who ask the questions. Uh, all of us actually can um, try to answer the questions, but because of the time, I just, uh, to be very uh, short, I start with the last one. I agree with uh, Dr. Muhammad. When Muhammad, I think uh, uh, that's why I brought this. That's why I brought this to tell people that uh, particularly those who say that Islamic heritage is dead and Islamic heritage is gone and uh, we need to, uh, uh, that's why, uh, in fact, they have many other uh, details about many of the Muslim scholars who prove to be uh, system thinking. Uh, and this is actually one of the features of the Quran itself. Mm. The Quran itself, because those who learn the Quran properly and correctly, they will have that global mind they will have that that uh, integrated mind but because the education of the quran itself the teaching of the quran itself when we uh, in the history of islamic civilization when enter we, when we enter when we close the door of ishtihad and we entered in the era of imitation the in, the era of sectarianism whether in fiqh or in political or in theology there were we destroyed our global mind our that's why what i want to tell people we need to regain back reclaim back that model a man like shafi'i he introduced a manhaj oh. who who surpassed or passed what, what uh, pass what plato and aristo was talking about in logic and the induction and all these type of things a person like al-farabi a man who start doing experiment. You cannot come up with these inventions if you don't have a systematic mind, a system thinking mind. So what I want to say is that Islam by its nature creates, because that's the Quran, you cannot, you can, and the Quran itself talks about how the people, whether the Kafirun or the others, how they made the Quran, he used the term Idhin. Idhin means you made the Quran into pieces, into pieces. So you take from the Quran what suits you. No, that's why, let's say the movement of uh, Islamization of knowledge, one of its main objective, brothers and sisters, is to regain back that unity of the mind, that, that uh, holism of thinking, why we are talking about epistemology? Epistemology is, is removing reductionism, is talking about Islam in a holistic manner. Means we regain back the dynamism, the abilities of the Muslim mind to analyze and synthesize because analyzing only, distracting only, and you don't have the ability to reconstruct knowledge is, 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 is a problem. And that's what's happening. We become more uh, critical, become more destructive, uh, the liberalists, the, uh, all these movements which are dealing with, the or from the orientalist onward, all are de deconstructivist, deconstructivist, are all reductionist. They take from Islam what suits their position. And that's wrong. The solution, brother, Dr. Uh, Khan from Bangladesh is we need to revive, as we are trying to do now, to revive the Muslim mind, to revive the Khalifa in the, in the perspectives which I mentioned before. To revive the Khalifa means in his mind to be able to see the bigger picture, to, and to have the competencies, the abilities when he deals with people or with phenomena or with issues, he understands not only the knowledge and the information, he has the wisdom. 
He has the hikmah. He understands the maqasid. He understands the way of dealing with others. Why ulama are fighting among each other? Why, the, why they are destroying each other? Why even in the history of Islam, when it becomes sectarianism and we created Shiism, we created uh, uh, the Sunni world and then under Shia you have hundreds and that one you have hundreds. Why all this? Why we are uh, like this? You know, even though the Quran, when you read the Quran deeply, the Quran says that we are created to be mukhtalif. We are created to be ikhtilaf. Quran doesn't want us to be in uniform. Like military or, the, the, or those who are like having a uniform. No. The Quran, the Quran says he created us to be mukhtalif. Ikhtilaf is a, is a fitrah. Ikhtilaf is the nature of the creation of Khalifatullah. Otherwise, there is no need Khalifatullah. And the Sharia, what the Sharia is doing is to make that Ikhtilaf Rahmah. The Maqasid Sharia, to make that Ikhtilaf, Islam, Sharia is not here to remove Ikhtilaf. It's impossible because our Colors are مختلف. Our languages are مختلف. Our culture is مختلف. Our, our understanding is مختلف. What Sharia is doing is to put inside our mind, soul, and heart, and our understanding to put that your ikhtilaf is to be rahma. Your ikhtilaf is to be direct towards being a khalifa, building Umran, building Tamadun, building civilization, not for destruction, not for killing one another. That's why the Quran says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa ma khalaq, uh, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qabaila, litta'arafu, litta'arafu, to know one another. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَقْرِ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ خَيْرِيَّةٍ The best. وما, uh, the, the Quran says وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمُ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ So brothers and sisters, we are missing all this. So what is the solution? Is the educational system is the family system, is the, is the social system, is the religious system to educate the ummah, to bring up this real deep understanding of, the, of Islam and its implementation. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Rasulullah says, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya. The role of ulama is very crucial in Islam. So when the prophets left and die, who inherit the mission of the prophets is the ulama. So, islahul ulama, reforming the ulama and the muta'allim is the starting point in all what we are doing. That's why educational institutions, universities, uh, primary school, uh, uh, secondary school, university, uh, any type of education need to integrate this understanding, this holistic understanding of Islam. So the last answer here is uh, Prof. Habib. Uh, I think the integration of Maqasid uh, into the model, it's there. It's there theoretically. But now, uh, unfortunately, no time. Uh, I can show you uh, how we integrate it, for example, in economics and how we integrate it in Islamic studies when we teach fiqh al-mu'amalat or we teach fiqh al-jinayat or we teach fiqh al-ibadat or when we, how, how do we integrate this system thinking from an Islamic perspective into this? And the objective is what? To help our mind become more comprehensive, more integrated, where it integrates akhlaq, values, moralities, maqasid, and technology science, skills of leadership, skills of governance, skills, and use all this guided by Islam to deal with real issues of life. That's a, 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 an, an educational system that we are looking for. That's, that's I think, a very long answer already, another lecture. Nato, unmute, please. Unmute. 
Yes, I'm here. Again, I'm fasting also. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Aziz. Uh, Everybody is fasting. Very precise <laughs> answer. Or the, or the, it is all within the time limit as you gave uh, 10 minutes. I think I cannot entertain any more questions. If you have, we can... Oh, Dato, I have uh, just a few comments. Is it possible? This is uh, from Kuantan. From Kuantan. Yeah, Dr. Abdul Aziz, how is it? One more? When one, one comment to Dr. Ibrahim. I know him. He can talk for two days. <laughs> yeah, just I say, okay. You can communicate directly yeah, with Dr. Uh, Abdul Aziz. No problem. Uh, so we got to end our sessions because of the iftar in not not only in Malaysia in other countries. You know. Yeah. Thank you very much for everybody. Those and, who and so maybe we suggest uh, Prof. Aziz have the second round in future. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, inshallah, we will have the second still round. Alive. During uh, during the we, during that time we are not fasting, so we can be better. Yeah, for me it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. a very short comment. Uh, it is not question. Uh, <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, all all do said that. Inshallah, we will see you again in IDSO uh, Series Twenty Seven. Inshallah. So with that, I wish all of you.